Welcome to Module 5.5.4, Seed Plants. Uh, to introduce this module, I just want to remind you of the family tree or the cladogram of the plant kingdom, showing the origin of plants down here, uh, the bryophyta, the non-vascular plants that we've already uh, discussed, then the evolution of vascular tissue, and the seedless vascular plants, which includes phylum pteraphyta and the ferns, uh, that we discussed in the previous module. Now we're going to discuss uh, the evolution, the development of seeds. Um, uh, rather, we're going to talk about those plants that have these features. And this includes uh, two phyla. In this module, we're going to discuss the gymnosperms. In particular, we're going to emphasize phylum coniferophyta. Excuse me. Um, so seed plants, this is used here as a non-taxonomic grouping of several phyla. And so to study the seed plants, we need to know what a seed is. And the definition is written right here on the seed you see on the screen. A seed is a dormant plant embryo and a food supply within a protective seed coat. So there really is a little plant in there. And you can actually see its stem and its leaves and its first root. It's really uh, quite remarkable. And it's much better positioned. A seed is much better positioned for survival than is a spore, for example, because a seed has uh, more development as, in, as a plant embryo, and it also has a food supply. So it's kind of an interesting thing to consider. Uh, the coconut is the largest seed, a piece of trivia here, I suppose. So let's look at the features of the seed plants. Uh, these uh, plants are vascular. They have xylem and phloem. They do not require standing water to reproduce. This is unlike the previous two phyla of plants, the bryophyta and the pteraphyta, both of which required standing water. Here the seed plants, the coniferophyta and the anthophyta, neither require standing water to reproduce. Their sperm do not swim. Uh, the cuticle is well developed and drought tolerant in the seed plants. Uh, the seed plants have the true vegetative plant organs, including true leaves, true roots, and true stems. Uh, in seed plants, the sporophyte is dominant. Uh, and so when you look at a plant, be it a pine tree or an oak tree or a grass plant or a poppy flower or a rose, those are all sporophytes that you're seeing. Um, and in fact, the gametophyte, the other stage in alternation of generations is even further reduced. They are non-photosynthetic, they're parasitic, and they are microscopic. You can really only see them with a microscope. And so we have separate male and female gametophytes that arise from separate spores. Uh, and we saw, uh, for example, in the bryophytes that this could happen, but here it always happens. We have separate male and female gametophytes. The male gametophyte is simply a pollen grain. The female gametophyte is a few cells in a seed. And technically, it wouldn't be considered a, cell, a seed. It would be an immature seed. Uh, and this is showing the two groups of plants. Here in the upper left, we can see a microscopic female gametophyte in the female cones, and we can see microscopic male uh, gametophytes in the little male cones, uh, and that the, the sporophyte is independent. And in the uh, flowering plants, um, we, uh, there are microscopic male gametophytes uh, in certain flower parts, and there's microscopic female gametophytes in certain parts, and the plant itself is a sporophyte, and that's the independent uh, part. And so note that what it says right here in the bottom, it says reduced gametophyte uh, is dependent on the sporophyte. And that's true in both the gymnosperms and the angiosperms, both groups of the seed plants that's true of. So let us not forget the most important feature of the seed plants, and that is that seed plants have a seed. So make sure you note that if you're ever asked to report on the uh, features of the seed plants. Um, and the two groups of seed plants are the gymnosperms and the angiosperms. Uh, this actually shows just some pollen grains, the male gametophyte, if you will. Um, and so, kind of cool. Uh, this is a, a, po a pollen grain from a pine tree, and it has wings. Kind of looks like Mickey Mouse upside down, 
but the the what would be the upside down Mickey Mouse ears, those are the wings, and this is the part that has uh, the reproductive cells of the pollen grain in it. Okay, so let us now consider uh, the third phylum of flowering plants that we're, oh, I'm sorry, not a flowering plant, of plants that we're going to consider. These are not flowering plants, and this is the first of the two groups of plants that belong to the seed plants, uh, the gymnosperms. And the word gymno means naked, and sperm means seed. These are the naked seed plants, and so their seeds are not produced inside a fruit, or, covered, or they're not covered by a fruit. Rather, they're produced on the scales of a cone, and they are naked on that scale, and hence the name gymnosperms. This actually contains a number of phyla. We are going to learn one phylum, phylum coniferophyta, the phylum to which pine trees and other conifers belong. And I'm going to mention the other three groups to you, but not give you the phylum names. Uh, you should uh, remember, perhaps, that they are gymnosperms, but no more than that. And so, a gymnosperms, naked seeds, seed has no covering of fruit. There are four phyla, the cycads, which we see in the bottom left here. Uh, these include forms like the sago palm. Now, this is not a true palm. It's just called a palm. Uh, palm trees are, in fact, uh, flowering plants. Uh, but So don't make that mistake. Cycads have cones that they reproduce with. Uh, the second group... As uh, we're, I'm listing here is Mormon tea, uh, and in fact it has a whole phylum name, but I'm just using Mormon tea. Uh, ephedra is the genus of that plant because they're common here in Arizona. In this photograph, you can see the Grand Canyon in the background. You may have heard of herbal ecstasy. Herbal ecstasy is a Chinese species of ephedra that uh, has the effects of speed, uh, but it also can cause heart attacks. So uh, you should avoid taking anything like herbal ecstasy. Um, the third phylum uh, includes the ginkgo trees, and ginkgo is a really interesting genus of plants. Of course, ginkgo biloba is used as a, an over-the-counter uh, aid to memory, and sometimes it's given to Alzheimer's patients. But the really uh, interesting thing from a, a botanical perspective about ginkgo is that this is a tree that was known in the fossil record, and we found living examples uh, in Southeast Asia, but only in cultivation, in cultivation in uh, monasteries and things like this. We didn't find forests of ginkgo or something like that. So it's kind of an interesting plant that might have some interesting history there. So we are going to learn though only coniferophyta by name. That's the only phylum that we're going to learn here. Uh, we, I do want you to know a representative genus. The genus is Pinus, P-I-N-U-S. Um, we did make you learn a genus for Bryophyta, the non-vascular plants, that was Sphagnum. But for the Pteraphyta, the ferns, we did not make you learn a representative genus. But here you do need to know a genus. Uh, let's look at the features of phylum coniferophyta. They have, of course, all the seed plant features as well as the plant features. Uh, the conifers produce separate cones, uh, separate male and female cones that produce a male and female gametophytes. They have no fruits, and the leaves are often reduced to be scale or needle-like. And uh, earlier in the semester, I mentioned to you the reason for this, but I'll just uh, refresh that, and that was because uh, conifers often live at higher elevation where much of the precipitation falls as snow in a frozen form. And so although there may be many feet of snow, the soil can be extremely dry underneath it because all the moisture is frozen. And therefore conifers, which are evergreen, uh, or many of which are evergreen, uh, must be able to survive uh, with very little moisture. And so to preserve moisture, they have reduced the surface area of their leaves in this needle-like or scale-like fashion. Um, of course, another feature of the conifers is that they are one of the most important uh, lumber trees. Uh, we use them uh, for construction, and it's a very significant and important uh, economic use. Uh, the life cycle, it gets a little more difficult at this point to tease out that life cycle, but we can still see the line of ploidy. Uh, but what is kind of hard to understand is that the pine tree is diploid, and then on the female cone, 
uh, there's a haploid part, and in the male cone, there's a haploid part. And so it's not as physically separated, perhaps, uh, because the, the gametophytes, both the female and male, are utterly dependent upon the sporophyte, and they are produced upon cones on the sporophyte. And so if we look in parallel, that inside the immature seed, which is called an ovule, that's a, a term that I don't require you to know, but in, inside the immature seed is where the female gametophyte uh, is produced. Uh, it's by meiosis, and it will undergo several cell divisions, and it will produce uh, eggs inside the seed. And then the male cone uh, it undergoes meiosis, and it produces uh, the four products of meiosis all survive, and they all become pollen grains, which are the male uh, gametophyte. In conifers, a typical life cycle takes two years. The first year, the female cone is very small. It's not the large woody structure that you're used to, but it might be as big as the end of the tip of one of your fingers, and it's green, and the scales are very small, and it will barely open up the scale, and a droplet will come out called a pollination droplet. This actually is re a, re a receptive area for pollen, which uh, in the conifers blows through the air, and when a pollen grain lands on there, uh, the pollination droplet will be sucked back in under the uh, green scale of the female cone, and it, the, a pollen tube will grow slowly from the pollen grain uh, toward the immature seed, where eventually the sperm inside the pollen will fuse with the egg inside the immature seed, producing a plant embryo. If you look right here in kind of the center, you can see that this shows seed formation. It shows a little embryo, and it has a crown of leaves, of little pine needles there. Uh, you can really see exactly that if you look inside the uh, pinion pine seed. You can see it in any conifer seed, but the pinion pine just has a particularly large seed where you can see that well. And I would just like to mention here, as we saw in lab, uh, that the female cones tend to be on the top and the male cones on the bottom of the sporophyte, and this is to uh, promote outcrossing so that the pollen just doesn't fall from the male cones down onto the female cones, and the one pine tree just ends up fertilizing all of its own uh, eggs. And um, by having it the other way with the female cones on the top, then the pollen has to be blown, and pine trees and most wind-pollinated plants tend to grow in large homogenous stands. Anyway, with that, we want to conclude uh, this module, and we'll, we will return and talk about the last phylum of flowering plants, the, uh, the last phylum of plants, the flowering plants, phylum anthophyta.